I'm Marty Stauffer. I'm always thrilled at the sight of soaring birds floating effortlessly on the wind. Everyone admires their airborne freedom, and certainly everyone at one time has wished for wings to be able to fly away. Lifted free of the land, birds blend with their surroundings as no other living thing can. Birds are creature and sky joined as one. The sight and sound of birds constantly delight our senses and enrich our lives. Their colors and songs fill the world with beauty. But what most dramatically sets them apart from the rest of the animal kingdom and what we most admire about them is the glory and the power of their wild wings. Birds, exquisitely adapted for life in the clouds. Their light, streamlined bodies are aerodynamic design at its finest. Their songs rival the most inspired of our written music. But their music will never reveal the mysteries of their private lives, where they have been and where they are going. Delicate in appearance, the Arctic Tern is actually quite rugged. It literally lives in the air, even feeding its chicks on the wing. In only weeks, the young also will fly. They will not need to learn, for flight is an inborn ability, perfected by practice. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. breeding in the far north, then wintering as far south as Antarctica. The Arctic Tern may log up to 22,000 miles per round trip. Annually, it migrates the greatest distance of any animal on the planet. Migration is one way to avoid the diminished food supply and bitter weather of northern winters. Another is hibernation. The only bird known to hibernate? This, the poor will. A western relative of the whippoorwill, the poor will lives from deserts to mountain peaks. Those in warmer climates may stay active all winter, while those in cold areas sleep. At night, 
or at the most for several months. I discovered this bird near my home in the Colorado Rockies. The half-awake bird does not seem bothered by my curiosity. Although it's already April, spring has not yet arrived in the high country, and the poor will still has several more weeks to sleep away. Desert birds seldom face freezing temperatures or a reduced food supply. A large, long-legged member of the cuckoo family, the roadrunner earned its name in the early west by its habit of running in front of horse-drawn wagons. Lizards and snakes are some of its favorite foods. Roadrunners are also called, with good reason, snake killers. More than a meal, the dead sidewinder is also a present, offered by the male to the female. If she accepts the strange gift, it may guarantee an ongoing relationship. Apparently, male and female roadrunners bond permanently and live in the same area year round. One moment contentedly perching, the next darting out to catch a flying insect, the scissor-tailed flycatcher. It's the state bird of Oklahoma where these scenes were filmed. No other American songbird has such a proportionately long tail. It will perch for hours, waiting for insects to fly or crawl past. Also patrolling the flycatcher's fields is the mockingbird, our country's most popular songbird. During breeding season, a male mockingbird vigorously defends his territory. The brown pelican's body is big, but because of its hollow bones, 
is much lighter than it looks. It may be awkward and out of place on the ground, but in the air, a pelican symbolizes natural elegance. This is the only truly aquatic songbird, the water oozel, or dipper. Diving into icy mountain streams, then swimming underwater, the dipper catches insects, snails, and minnows. Its feet are far from flippers, and its wings are not fins, but they function well nevertheless. This songbird, able to cover its eyes with clear upper lids and close its nostrils, is as at home in water as it is on land. America's largest upland game bird, the wild turkey. They prefer to walk, although they can fly in short, strong bursts. The male's beak is covered with a fleshy snood, or leader, that swells and changes color during courtship season. All birds are visual creatures. For them, as for us, eyesight is the most important sense. And life revolves around what can be seen. Courtship consists of dramatic postures and movements peculiar to each species, like the gobbler's unusual strutting display. Calls also play a part. The male's objective is to attract as many females as possible. Immediately after mating, the hens want nothing to do with the toms, which is probably why this female is hen-pecking this male.
the common loon. Its eerie courtship calls echo across our northern wilderness lakes. Another mating season behavior, the racing display of western grebes. A related species, these are red-necked grebes. This courting pair sets up their territory near a family of muskrats. Nest building is part of the grebes courtship ritual. Marsh grass, reeds, and rushes are used to build the floating platform. When the nest is completed, the pair will mate on it. The grebe is thought to be the most well adapted to water of all the birds. Still, it's a shy nester. One pair requires 10 acres, with no interference from intruders, like this marauding muskrat. The hungry muskrat carries away the grebe's nest faster than they can put it together. It becomes apparent that this water nest is not going to work. Nearby, a shore nesting loon sets a better example. On land, the grebe can barely walk, and it never strays far from the lake. If a predator approaches, the shore nesting bird can always escape into the water. Mother and father share the duties of parenting. In this place of many islands, Mother Grebe makes a much needed ferry for her young chicks. Male and female grebes look alike. However, all ducks, like the common eider, differ. This is the female. And this, more boldly patterned bird, is the male. Eiders summer around the Arctic Circle. Eiderdown is famous for its light warmth. Unfortunately, the same insulating down that helps the ducklings to survive extreme cold has also attracted humans and has led to the destruction of some nesting colonies. Nesting not on fluffy down, but on unyielding rock, the myrrh also gathers in colonies by the sea.
but soft seems better for the survival of young. And a rufous hummingbird gathers down from willow catkins for her own tiny nest. Another unusual nest is occupied by belted kingfishers. This underground burrow took the parents a full month to dig. Inside, the young stay dry and warm. Outside, their parents dive into the nearby stream for fish to feed the growing youngsters. The young will leave the nest and begin hunting for themselves in several weeks. For now, they depend on their parents for food and swallow their meals head first and whole. A green heron mother does the swallowing for her young chicks. Back at the nest, she serves up a pre-digested soup. Flying, fishing, swimming, and singing, birds expend enormous amounts of energy and require enormous amounts of food. So there's no such thing as eating like a bird. Nestlings may devour their own weight in food every day. The common, always curious seagull can also be found as close as the nearest beach. These creatures have no words. Still, their sounds are filled with meaning. Even the youngest among us hears their call. If we listen, they will tell us what they know, speaking to our hearts, to our souls, and to the child within each of us. Birds are often a youngster's introduction to the untamed world. There is no spot on earth 
that has not been blessed by the shadow of a bird in flight. We may never see all of the nearly 9,000 species that exist worldwide, but we can enjoy those around us at almost any time. Since long before we were humans and had language, we marveled at the flight of birds. They kindled our imagination. Earthbound, we humans watched and wondered while the birds flew above the mountain peaks, into the sea, beyond the horizon, and eventually through the fabric of time. Where they led, we found ways to follow, and they continue today. In our man-made world, birds serve as vital barometers of environmental health. They are as important as they are inspiring, and we will always admire the awesome natural flight of wild wings. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.